Welcome to Cinema's Underbelly, the channel where we dive into the deepest, darkest trenches of the underground to analyze and review the most obscure, obscene, and controversial films that cinema has to offer. I'm your host, Jonathan Doe, and today we will be reviewing the Blood Crows Inside Trilogy. The Blood Crows Inside Trilogy are a collection of short films released by a Baroque house a California-based production company that centers on releasing erotic fetish and gore audiovisual works. Nearly every one of their releases pays heavy homage to the pseudo-snuff and erotic fetish classics that were being pumped out of Asia during the 1990s and early 2000s. Titles like Terrible Meal, Women's Flesh, My Red Guts, Lady in the Sea of Blood, and Tumbling Doll of Flesh showing considerable influence when it comes to the Blood Crodes and Side trilogy. Though each one of these films shares similar basic themes of graphic sexual content and violence, each film focuses on a different realm within that subject matter, making all three titles a unique viewing experience in its own right. The first in the trilogy, Spit, is clearly a tilt of the hat to the infamous Japanese nasty, Terrible Meal a vomit fetish film literally about a woman stuffing her face full of food only to vomit it all up and then eat it again. Similarly, Spit is also a cinematic endeavor which explores vomit as the focal point of its subject matter. Setting its characters around a mysterious book that compels the all-female cast to indulge in self-pleasure and emetophilia in all its various forms. The second film in the trilogy is Blood Tragedy, a film that runs parallel with the plot of the cult classic Japanese title, Women's Flesh, My Red Guts. Both films begin with women discovering that their relationships with their lover has come to an end, and both films then document these women as they grieve through their losses by engaging in masturbatory self-mutilation and suicide. The last in the series is called Sea of Blood, a title that borrows from the little-known Japanese gem, Lady in the Sea of Blood. And though they share similarities in title, the plot of this last entry appears to derive a much greater influence from the infamous pseudo-snuff classic Tumbling Doll of Flesh. As both films center around women auditioning for amateur porno films, only to discover that their crew members have much more sinister intentions and that they are soon to be victims of the underground snuff circuit. What I really enjoy about this trilogy, and a Baroque house as a studio, is that though these films clearly derive inspiration from the erotic fetish gore classics of the East, they have found a way to explore the same elements of sadomasochism and erotic nihilism while leaving out the mean-spirited misogyny that is so common in some of these better-known Asian classics. The films that a Baroque house releases are all joint efforts. Many of the graphic scenes of sexual violence depicted on screen were the ideas of the actresses hired to start in them. And that is what is so great about what a Baroque house is doing. These aren't films where it is questionable whether there is some element of exploitation going on behind the scenes. The films that a Baroque house are making are passion projects created by those who are active members of the BDSM community and lovers of this kind of cinema. All in all, if fetish gore is your thing, I cannot recommend these films enough. They are a refreshing western take on a genre that for decades only saw attention from foreign underground markets. But for those interested, I suggest acting fast, because everything a Baroque house releases is limited to a certain number of copies, and after that, they're gone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see the latest on reviews and updates. Until next time, this is Cinema's Underbelly.